Okay, hi everybody. Uh, this is how to build uh, a camera from the truck. Uh, we'll be using uh, one of the 17x lenses uh, on our cameras. Uh, tripod's on my right, camera case is on my left. Uh, typically your tripod and camera case you want to make sure that the colors match. So if I have the red camera case I want to make sure I have the red tripod. Uh, in this case uh, we grabbed the first one that we saw so we're going to be using the green tripod and the red camera case. So uh, first thing you want to do is take the camera out of the tripod case, or excuse me, the tripod out of the tripod case and there should be a string uh, that is attaching your camera tripod uh, together so you just loosen that string and usually what I do is I bring the arms up first like so. You want to separate the tripods, what we call the spreader, which is down here at the base. And depending on how high you're going to put your tripod, uh, you probably want to spread the base out wide. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as is, which is probably fine. And then you're going to loosen the knobs and bring the tripod as high as you can, or as high as you want. Uh, usually what I tell people is you want to build your tripod about a foot lower than what you want your camera to be at. And you usually want your camera to be eye level with uh, your talent. So whoever, if it's a performer, you want to make sure it's eye level with the talent. In this case, I'm just going to leave it uh, like this. Now on the back side of the tripod, you'll see that there's a uh, level bubble. Uh, before I build anything on the camera, I want to make sure that that bubble is center. So for that, I can loosen uh, this grip underneath the tripod head and I can move the tripod head around as you can see right here. But What I want to do is I want to get that bubble as close to center as I possibly can because if your camera is not level uh, there's no point in going any farther. So I've got leveled my tripod head, I've got my tripod at the height that I want it to be, now I'm ready actually to build the camera. So for the camera case, there's four locks around the outside of the camera case. I'll loosen all those, open up the camera case, and you'll see all the components. Uh, first off, what you want to do is take note of how everything is laid out. Uh, you'll notice that you have the zoom handle on the right. You have your headset back here in the top right corner of the uh, case. You have your viewfinder, which is here. Then you have your focus, or your servo, right here on the top left. Then you have your camera plate, which is right here, and then you have your camera body and the lens and your viewfinder hood. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the camera body out. We're also going to take uh, the tripod plate out. Tripod plate slides from the back forward. And you want to make sure that this knob right here on the tripod head is loose. Slide the tripod plate in and you should hear a click. When you hear the click, that means that you can't take the tripod plate off unless you press the safety release, which is right here. So if I press the safety release, you'll notice the tripod plate can come off. Otherwise, you want to slide the tripod plate all the way in. Tighten your uh, lock here, and then I want to put the actual camera body on the tripod head, like that. Uh, when you hear it click, and you can kind of wiggle the top of the camera, uh, you'll know that it's locked in there and it's not going to go anywhere. Now, um, usually from here what I do is I remove the tripod, uh, excuse me, the lens cap. Um, if we're doing an outdoor event, don't take off the lens cap quite yet. If you're doing an indoor event, obviously there's not a lot of dust and everything going on, so I usually leave, leave the lens cap on if we're doing an outdoor event. But in this case we're indoors, so I remove the tripod or the, the lens cap. Uh, once the lens cap is on, then I want to remove, if I have, if I'm doing a studio configuration, I want to remove the handheld eyepiece. Um, obviously we don't need an eyepiece if we're doing a studio configuration. So I'm going to put that back in the case. Next thing I do is out of the case I take the uh, viewfinder, which is here, and you'll notice that on the bottom of the viewfinder there's a triangular shape uh, plate here, and that basically slides on from the back, slides forward, and one more time, again, you're going to hear it click. When you hear it click, you know that it's locked in there and you can turn the tripod or excuse me, the uh, viewfinder in. And for that, for the cabling, you take the cable, slide it around the front, and you always want to plug it in with the tails of the cable going towards the lens of the camera. So uh, you always want to make sure that that tail is always going towards the camera. Then I want to take my two components that I put on the tripod uh, plate here on the back side 
basically we screw those into the uh, tripod legs. I guess you call these the arms. Uh, you always want to make sure that that's nice and tight back here. I'll turn it so you guys can see it. And then we also want to do the zoom controller. I always leave the cables dangling at this point. And every camera operator is different, so however I build uh, my arms and my legs for the tripod, um, somebody else is going to come along and change it depending on the camera operator. But basically when we get these set up so that they can come in and uh, tweak it in accordance to whatever they need. So I'm going to screw this together and clamp it down on the arms. Then I'm going to take the cable and I'm going to plug it into the bottom of the lens right in the middle. And you want to make it so that the flat part of the cabling is going towards the inside of the lens. And when again, when you push it up, you'll hear it click. So you know that cable's plugged in. Then you want to take the focus servo. You want to put it into the focus outlet and kind of screw it in. And it should go flush with the focus outlet. And again, the servo down here will plug in. Should go flush and it screws all the way in. And when you turn the focus, you should see it turn here on the lens as well. So, this is almost complete. Uh, finally, what we need to do is put on the sun visor for the viewfinder, which is right here. And we just screw that in so it's good and tight. Then, finally, we need our headset for our camera operators. Clearly somebody didn't do this right last time, that's okay. Um, and usually I put the headset down here on the base of the tripod and plug this into the intercom spigot which is on the back of the camera. Now, last thing I want to do before I walk away from a camera, you always want to make sure your camera is balanced. So what I want to do is I'm going to make sure that this is balanced by unlocking the tripod head uh, pin which is right here, this little red arrow on the uh, tripod head. And this will get a lot of people if you've never operated a camera before. Then I want to make sure I unlock the two locks right here. And I want to let go of the camera and I also want to zero out my drag and my tilt drag right there. And If I let go of the camera you'll notice that right now it's very back heavy. So if in order to slide it forward I want to put that pen back in and I'm going to loosen this knob here that controls the tripod plate. I'm going to push the camera all the way forward and you'll notice that the uh, cabling right here is kind of catching. So I'm going to move this whole arm forward a little bit to kind of compensate for me moving the camera forward. And so I'm going to move the camera forward again. I'm going to loosen the arrow and you can still see it's a little back heavy so I want to go a little farther forward with it until I can finally feel that it's tri it's perfectly balanced. Now, to check to make sure that your camera is balanced, what you want to be able to do is tilt all the way down on the camera, let go of it, tilt all the way up, let go of it, and it doesn't move. In that case right here, it's a perfectly balanced camera because that way your camera operator can shoot around, let go of the camera, and it's not going to move. So, that is a completely balanced camera. That is a completely built camera. So, that is how you build a camera.